Okay, so now I'm going to go into building the X window system, and this is quite involved because there's lots of little packages to be compiled. But lucky for us, the Linux from Scratch team have put together a few scripts which you'll see in the book. So I've just started the machine up. I'm going to log in, but not as root because I'm just remember I've got a um, an unprivileged user so I'll be continuing to use that and I'm, once again I'm going to use my virtual terminal F5 as the window where the browser will be, the text browser and also remembering to go into the sources directory where I can quickly download the source tarballs to without having to put in path names or anything like that. So once again I'm going to type control R, type links, just find one of the links, the URLs. Um, in fact I'm going to go all the way back to this view command here. And it's eleven dot zero. And I'm just going to scroll down and look for Windows. Window. There it is, Window and Display Manager. So it looks like it's Section 6 or Chapter 24. Um, if I just go back, you can see all these little individual packages we've got to install. All the way down there, so there's like a page, page worth, probably 20 or so. Um, but even Despite that, there's even more than that. For example, if I go into XOR libraries, you'll see there's a, a script there we have to put in, which has got even more packages, but these can all get compiled uh, in one go. So it saves a hell of a lot of uh, typing and aching fingers. So let's start going down I'll get my graphical browser up in fact I might just uh, look through here first it's just so much easier to see and to explain so I'll just do next so the chapter contains instructions to build and configure a graphical user environment Xorg in addition to clearing up some licensing issues with X386 introduced a completely auto tool build for the X window system this means that the packages build and install using the conventional configure make, make install commands as opposed to, to a proprietary build system that required hand editing of configuration parameters in a C-like syntax. <coughs> Xorg also brought with it a modular build system. While the separation into modules resulted in full control of the features available to the X server in a given installation, it also made the installation more tedious as it requires more than uh, installing more than 100 different packages to obtain a functional X window environment. So that's the issue that's here, and that's why, um, as, as you saw, some of these libraries are built um, in bulk because they've got um, a similar uh, process to install them. They can just be done um, in a in a script. So let's move on and start with the build. There's some um, information here about building it. Uh, well, there's a description first of all, exactly what Xorg is. It's a freely distributable open source implementation of the X window system. This system provides the client server interface between display hardware, the mouse, keyboard and video displays and the desktop environment whilst providing both windowing infrastructure and a standardized application interface. So just to be clear, X Windows is everything it says there. It's it doesn't actually um, provide anything that will appear on the screen. That's provided by later packages. What it does, it provides the mechanisms for those things to be written to the screen and for the keyboard to be scanned and so on, the mouse to be interpreted. Um, so as we've always seen, already seen, it's also tooled modular system. Um, it mentions here again there's 100 packages to assist with such a large task installing WGET is strongly recommended so 
we've already got that installed and I think we even rebuilt it as well did we um, let me take a look um, yes it's been reinstalled so it we've got fully featured wget so we shouldn't have any issues with that at all um, given the number of packages available deciding which package you need to install for your particular setup may seem a bit overwhelming there's a couple of links there to get an idea of what you might need um, but if you're unsure you should install all packages at the cost of extra disk, disk space um, even if you intend to download only the necessary packages you should download the wget file list these files are ordered by dependency and package versions listed in files are known to work well with each other so they're obviously in those lists in a particular order so that you don't get like the first package failing because it needs another dependency that's later on in the list um, further the wget file list contains comments for specific patches which are deprecated or are not recommended to install new packages are likely intended for the next release of the Axelwalk and have already proved to be incompatible with the current version of software installed in BLFS the installed size of Xorg can be reduced considerably by installing only the packages you will need and use. However, the BLFS book cannot account for all dependencies and build options for individual Xorg packages. Therefore, the instructions here assume, in the BLFS book that is, assume that all packages have been built. And there's a wiki link there containing dependency information. And it says that's continually, well, it's under development. Um, you're encouraged to add to these pages if you discover additional information that would be helpful to other users. Um, additionally, because of the large number of repetitive commands, you are encouraged to partially automate the build. Instructions will be given that utilize sudo. It's recommended to use the sudo configuration option for the user that will be building the XOR packages. Um, I think if I already shown that, let's check that. Um, so if I become sudo su yes that looks like that's already the case um, if i go back oops, to the graphical browser just oh it doesn't tell us what the uh config file is so i'll try and remember it is it sudoers dot d sudo yeah, so that's if you haven't done it already, um, I have actually already shown how to do this, but just in case you decided not to do it, as I said, it is possibly a security issue because it means anybody who's got access to the user or a user that's in the wheel group at the moment um, will be able to come root just by typing sudo um, without any challenges for the password to prove that the person who's requesting that root access is actually um, the person whose account uh, is in use at the time. Um, I may even change these as well, possibly these paths, um, but we'll see how we go. But certainly, as you saw, I, I use sudo, uh, the sudo command, and I wasn't challenged from password, so that no password colon, as you see there, will achieve that so let's go back um, following instructions assume that shell startup files have been set up as described in bash shell startup files so again that's already been done that was these profile files bash completion etc so that's all been done as well As with the previous releases of the X window system, it may be desirable to install Xorg into an alternate prefix. This is no longer common practice among Linux distributions. The common installation prefix for Xorg on Linux is user. There's no standard alternate prefix, nor is there any exception in the current revision of the file hierarchy standard for release 7 of the Xorg, X window system. Alan Coopersmith of Sun Systems once stated that Sun, we were using user x11 and plan to stick with it. Only the opt prefix or the user prefix adhere to the current FHS guidelines. 
So choose your installation prefix and set the XORG prefix variable with the following command. So um, I think I normally put it into opt because that's always the way it's been done in BLFS going back years when I first started doing this. So it's kind of, that's just what I'm used to really. Um, but as it says, you can do either. Um, so this is where there is a difference in the installation. If you do decide to install in the user prefix, you must omit the remainder of this page and continue to at util macros, which I presume is the first package to build. And that's probably because these configuration files are putting in the prefix that basically is not standard, if you like, I suppose, or not, not commonly in use, which is the user prefix. These paths will probably already be set under user, um, but they need to be set if you're using the opt prefix. So, as I say, I'm going to use the opt prefix purely because that's how I've done it. If you want to use the user, then obviously don't copy exactly everything I do. For example, don't copy these files and paste them in um, because of that warning there. You must omit the remainder of this page. Okay, so I think the thing to do now is go back to the terminal, go to our browser, and go onto these pages where the scripts are. So I'll just go on to next page, introduction, and here you can see again it says about choosing the prefix. So the first thing to do is to copy the first export. Don't copy the underline character because you don't want to make the XOR prefix to these characters here. They probably would cause failure left, right and centre. Um, let's just check if we have to do this as root or not. No, it doesn't say that. So, paste that in. And now we can change the um, path. So it's forward slash opt and press enter. Throughout these instructions, you will use the following configure switches for all of the packages. Create the XORG variable to use this parameter substitution. Uh, let's just copy that. Um, I'm just checking something. Yes, um, in actual fact, because this prefix is like the root of, or the equivalent of the root of the user, um, what would mean if I just left it as opt is that we'll get, for example, an opt bin directory with the XORG stuff in um, and maybe a user directory and so on. Now, if you don't want that and like me, you want to just keep the opt directory for, oh, we've got anything there at the moment, for high level directories for other packages, then you may want to set this to something like xorg um, so that's something to bear in mind and then that means that as we install xorg if it needs any bin directories or user directories they won't be mixed in with anything else that might get installed under opt that uses those directories and it does mean in theory that it would be easier to update xorg in the future because what we can do with this when it's finished is just create a um, a link 
to the actual version number and then a, a link called xorg to the actual xorg version number and it means you can install several versions more than one version of xorg and just point the link at the version that you want to use so that's the prefix that i'm going to set go back again and now i'm going to copy this next command to create an xorg config string which as you can see uses the xorg prefix I'll paste that in so now if we um, echo those two view those two I'm not sure if a style will work there will it? no it won't uh, those two variables so there's our prefix so that's the directory where all of the xorg packages will be installed and this config is a string that will be appended to every single configure command that we'll use um, and it might be augmented as well um, in case there's any other options that need are needed by the package that's going to be compiled and you can see the prefix there has been set so that's this substitution that occurred here xorg prefix it's um, computed that and inserted it into the prefix there now it tells us to create an etc profile the xorg, xorg .sh configuration containing these variables as the root user so let's copy this and as you can see what it's doing it's making these two variables we just created permanent um, in the profile directory so that means that every every time a user logs in if they're reading this these profile scripts they will get these two um, variables set automatically so we'll copy all of that become the root paste that in I'll just check double check that we have actually got those variables still this is why I went in as su and not su minus because that would have reset the environment I think as far as I remember that's the main difference so prefix no it doesn't look like it is working so maybe it doesn't keep there so what I need to do then is to do su minus sudo minus capital E I think that keeps the environment let's try it again xorg yes there they are now so there's the prefix and there's the config settings so now we can paste in that script knowing that those variables will be set correctly and once again let's double check there's no harm in checking it's better to check now and find it's done right and not check and find out when it's too late or we've done lots of work that these variables have not been set so you can see xorg prefix has indeed taken on our prefix that we've been set and we'll move on um, if you've installed sudo ensure that xorg prefix and xorg config are available in sudo environment as a root user run the following so this is basically it's probably to help prevent us having to type in um, sudo minus e so that these variables will be available without having to type that so let's put that in as well and if I now do sudo su those two variables should be there and indeed they are there's the prefix and there's the config so that's good and just to show what happened with this uh, command here what it did is it appended these to the um, well sorry it created a file called xorg um, it wouldn't have existed but this will get read every time sudo runs dot d forward slash xorg there you go um, ok so now the warning if you decided to use a standard user prefix you must omit the remainder of this page and continue at utils macros so as I said if you're not following exactly what I'm doing if you decided to use user that's not a problem but don't carry on with this next bit that I'm going to do uh, just skip forward to the util macros as it says there 
If you've decided not to use the standard prefix, be sure to add XOR prefix bin to your path environment variable and the XOR prefix lib package config and XOR prefix share package config to your package config ver uh, path variable. It is also helpful to specify additional search paths for GCC and then include directory for the AC local program. So issue the following commands as the root user. So that's what these commands do because then because it's not standard, the executables that we're going to create won't be in the path, so that's what this does, and so on. Whereas under user, user bin's already in the path, so it would have uh, been put in the path by default in the executables. So I'll become the root again and copy and paste this. Move back to the next page and copy the rest. So the script above needs to be activated. Normally it will be an automatic logon, but to activate it now as a regular user, we can source it. Um, that's interesting. Oh, sorry, as a regular user. Let's try that again. Okay. You should also add XLOR, XOR prefix lib to the etc ldso.conf. Again, as root user, issue the following. So let's issue that. Oh, right, okay, that's, that's because the second half hasn't got root access. Let's just do sudo su and repaste that command and it will work. And let's also view it to make sure that change went in correctly. And yes, there it is. There's our prefix optx.org and the appended forward slash lib. So that's all good. Let's go back. You should also modify etc man db, adding the appropriate mandatory man path, man path map, man db map entries following the examples for the user x11r6. Issue the following command as the root user. So it looks like what it's changing is the path from x11r6 to xorg prefix, which is what our prefix will be. Oops, don't do that in that. Window. I want to do it in that window and if I grab um, uh, opt for example in etc man db.conf you can see there there's our prefix optx.org optx.org um, and optex.org there. So those changes have been made. Right, um, yeah, I pasted in there so it's kind of screwed up the page here, unfortunately. So let's go back again. Right, uh, so that's the man done. Some applications that were shared files in user share x11. Create a symbolic link to the proper location as the root user. So we'll paste that in as well. That link's done. If building KDE, some CMake files look for XORG in places other than XORG prefix. Allow CMake to find XORG with this link. So I will be installing KDE. It's, it's my preference, but um, I will also show GNOME as well. If you prefer to see that being built. And that's the end of that page. So I'll just check on the graphical browser that we've done everything here. In case I've missed something.
So there's our prefix, our config file. It was put in the xorg sh. The sudo as part. Then we did a profile for xorg. Oh, some more piles added to xorg.sh. We sourced that. Add the lib to LDSO conf. Did a set to change xr x11 r6 to xorg prefix. The share x11 we did, and this um, xorg prefix as well to x11 r6 for KDE. So that's fine.